We are live. Let me post on the Discord. Posted in Discord, so I'm pretty sure this is the final day of the PTR uh, before they take it down for us, which is a shame. I have so much footage that I need to get. Um, it's a shame, but you know what? We're just gonna do what we can. I'm trying to fix my. Uh, YouTube settings. Now let me pull up my stream so I can chat with you guys. Alright. I now have YouTube and Twitch chat up. Come on, guys. Welcome in. Happy Monday. Good afternoon, Obsidian Fire. How are you doing? Uh, didn't have sound for that. But we did get our sound fixed for the PTR, um, which is good. I think that's a better experience for you guys, at least. And hopefully we don't mess up uh, like mechanics because of no sound cues. <clears throat> All right. Now, I have not been able to do a knock it offensive key um, since it's been current. Uh, so this might be a little sloppy. This is our first knockout since, yeah, since it was like current content. Also, all of my dragon riding buttons are different than they are on live. Um, okay, let's start. Okay, he got hit by a, a swirly. Ooh, our, our buttons aren't working. I don't know how to get my primordial wave to work. Oh, goodness. These are just the PTR woes. I did have to uninstall, then reinstall the PTR. Yeah, our buttons are not working. We don't have click going. So yeah, we're definitely gonna have to try to find time to get that working. Apparently all of our healing spells are going into us, so I'm going to have to like literally click spells for a second. Which is so weird. Oh yeah, our click's not working. I had to re-import like everything, but... Um... Looks like it didn't. That's okay. At least these pools are kind of easy, I guess. I'm literally having to click health bars to heal them. Um, one sec. Let's load up the spellbook. Click, click bind. Let's bind spell eight. Um, don't you love this, guys? First shield that one. Uh. Healing Surge is that one. Uh, on. Quick. Nine. Gives that. Did I do Riptide? Riptide that. Okay. We're good. Should be fine now. Team, I'm on my way. Alright, welcome in, guys. I see y'all pouring in. Um, y'all came in at, at the perfect time. Um... We're on the, the pretty spicy pools at the early early bit of Knockout Offensive, and we're coming in kind of behind because our game was a bit buggy. Oof. Can't kick that in time. I don't know. Normally you pull... Maybe we could reincarn. I don't think it's worth it. Normally you pull this pack first because you, you lusted on Fortified Weeks. Yeah, that someone in my group saying, why not do that with less? But also, we did come in late to that pool, but 
Hope you're doing well. What healers are you planning to push in Season 4? Well, I definitely want to push my Mistweaver to at least title this season. I think that's... Like, I feel like I've accomplished a lot of things that I wanted to, but one of the things that I haven't is get title yet. Um, so that's definitely what we're going to push for, but look at all those guys enraged. Yeah, this is definitely a Lust pool. You either pull this first with Lust, or you pull the Pat first in one pool, and then you come and pull these guys next, but... Also, we, like, our buttons just were not working. Oh, the tank left? That's okay. It's the PTR. Why wouldn't you just, like, leave a key? All right, let's just get into another one. Um, but I, I plan on doing that as, like, top priority. And then after... After um, Monk, I might push one other character, but I definitely want to, like, hard push one. Are you done with the 3k challenge for this week at least yeah I, so how how we're gonna do it hexy is hold on let me get back to let me hard first how we're doing it is there there's legitimately just not enough time for us to get um all seven healers to 3k but what we're gonna do is get a few more because there are some that are just like very close that it uh only need a few keys but um, they don't need the keys that are this week. I think this week it's like tyrannical, and they don't need tyrannical, for example. So uh, we're just gonna uh, next week we're gonna push like the holy priest and the shaman. The shaman's like forty IO away. The holy priest is like a couple hundred, but um, it's because like it, it only has like one type of key. It's like all fortified, and it needs all the tyrannical, for example. But um, yeah. So so right now we're just taking advantage since, and, and also like I know, look. I know it sucks that like I'm not gonna be able to get all of them, but there's just like so much content that I think healers need. Like I think healers need certain videos to be made that just aren't being made like ever through all the expansions, and um, I, like I'm just I want the I want the community to have those videos. So I'm like if I want that to happen, I need to play some PTR. Um, so that's that's what we're looking to do. But we're just gonna. I th I'm pretty sure today is the last day of PTR, and I have, like, half as much footage as I need. So we're just going to um, try to get a key on a couple different dungeons and um, go from there, you know. Uh, good, about done with work, so lurking right now. Huh? How was your day? It's been good. Honestly, it's been pretty chill. Um, me and my wife did some, like, meal prepping last night. So, like, it was nice making lunch today because it was, like, basically already made. But, yeah, I'm, I'm having a good morning. I just, like, uh, man, finding out that the PTR is going to be ending today is, like, stressing me out. Because I'm like, man, i got to do, like, I've got to make these videos and I, I need footage. I'm thinking about doing, like, a beacon in the Discord and kind of saying, like, hey, guys, look, if any of you are playing the PTR, please see if you can, like, and, and you have a means of recording yourself. Can y'all record your, your gameplay and, like, just send me VODs of y'all doing the dungeons because I need footage. Um, Aquatic Bear said, speaking of videos, I love your... Oh, I love your videos. Super helpful and love your vibes. I appreciate that. I try to just be myself and I try to, like, put myself... Because I literally am in, in everyone's shoes that watches my videos. Like, literally, just when I was first starting, like, a few years back... I was I was searching for content and so I know what it is that people look for and like what they need like what kind of content the the community's lacking and stuff so I just try to deliver that you know I think my mic might be a little far away like I just try to make the videos the way that if I were like starting now what I would want to see and then also like I just sprinkle in some things that I care about like I love talking about trinkets like I don't know I just like theory crafting like Fun little combinations, but yeah. I always like trying the off-meta trinkets too, which maybe maybe we'll do once we, we get into the season. I'm moving to a healer for my group and I've never truly healed Mythic Plus, so a little nervous. I did it as an alt. Ooh, you're picking a fun time to do it because season four, the dungeon pool is very like crazy, very hectic for healers, um, for sure, so. Because, like, just put yourself, just queue up on the PTR into a, a Ruby Life Pools key, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's it's pretty crazy. I'm going to message this guy and say, like,
just gonna say, hey, I was in your key last time and my buttons weren't working, but now we're chilling. Um, I tried Ruby Life Pools as preservation before Mythic Plus came out and that turned me away from healing. Yeah, you probably also did it before it got all those nerfs. Like it, it got a lot of nerfs. Um, that dungeon is difficult, very difficult. And only people running Algathar, and it sucks because Algathar is like the one that I have plenty of footage on. So we're gonna do literally a plus two. I know it's not hard. Um, we're just gonna we're just gonna send it. Um, we're gonna run Rashox and Broodkeeper's Promise, I think. We're going without Beacon. The reason why we're going without Beacon is because I don't want things to die as fast. I kind of wanna have give the enemies a chance to cast their spells, you know. But into Ruby Life Pools. I haven't done Ruby Life Pools since it was current content. Um, I think I, I've done like a couple Mythic Zeros just for like quests and stuff throughout the weeks. But it's been a while. And also, I don't know what all they changed coming into this season. Um, but yeah, as for the, the 3k challenge, it's. I, like, honestly, I just did not give myself enough time from the start to get it all done. Um, which is unfortunate, but also, I mean, if there were, if it wasn't at the end of the season, too, like, you know how the game just slows down? Just things just stacked up against it. Um, yeah. But I'm not, I, I don't know, I've, I've kind of accepted that, like, there's no way I get Holy Paladin and Resto Druid, because Resto Druid, no one accepts me in the keys right now, because it's not um, Break the Meta. Like, people are only accepting, like, I have more of a chance of getting accepted as a, a my Holy Paladin as Resto Druid, but there's just too much grinding that needs to be done on, on some of those characters. And if I did that grinding, like, if I had played it all night, every night, trying to get them to 3k... Um, it would just stunt the the videos that I make for season four so much. Like, yeah, but yeah, we're we're just having fun. We're we're getting some footage for some of these dungeons because I'm cooking up something. I am cooking up something for season four. Let me tell you guys. Um. Yeah, you guys are, I'm definitely making some content. I'm busting my butt making some content. Um, yeah, I was thinking about going to Arshami, so this is perfect. Yeah, I, I love Arshami. I think it's, like, really good for people who are new to healing. It definitely has, like, some some beginner-friendly um, mechanics in it. Uh, Raghelm said, watch you on the YouTube all the time. But first time in stream, hey, welcome in. Glad you were able to catch me. The streams are, are very different. I, honestly, I'm just like... And Culpa99 said the same. Very nice. Well, welcome in, guys. The streams are, are really chill. And um, especially this what we're doing today is we're just playing some of the, the dungeons that are going to be in the in the dungeon pool on the PTR, and we're just, just trying to go through them. We're going to let some casts go off. We might die to some stupid stuff just to show how it works, but very chill. I, I'm... I'm since I'm such a small streamer and stuff, I love streaming because it's it's like really easy for me to engage with you guys. So if y'all have anything that you've been like wanting to ask me, I, the streams are perfect for it. But um, these are scaled up this season, right? Yeah, like we're doing a plus two, but this is basically like a plus twelve. So it's still gonna look really easy. Let's be real. Uh, but this is just the only one we could get into. But Marley said. Uh, dude, you still did good with the 3k challenge, even if you don't finish it. Finding keys is hard right now. It is just like, it took way too much of my time and my sanity. Like, honestly, it was driving me insane. I was like, man, I'm, I've spent like 30 minutes in queue trying to entertain a stream. Tectonic slam hit me. Um, I don't know. It's just like, man, I just, if I were a viewer, would I be enjoying this right now? And, and it got to the point where I was like, I don't think people are enjoying my streams as much, but Yeah. We're fine. Season four is going to start. Things are going to pop off. Also, my plater profile is so weird. What is this, dude? 
I'll stun that this time. Oh, guess not. Yeah, see, that cast hurts in, like, a high key. So, yeah, man, this plater profile is hideous. I might have to load up um, Retail WoW and copy over our... Let's enter Stormkeeper. I don't run this on live. Stormkeeper, it's a really cool talent, though. Just makes your, like, next few um, Chain Lightnings, like, instant. So you basically become... What was that Sith Lord in Star Wars? The one that's like, do it. You know, Emperor Palpatine or something like that? That's probably not right. Don't don't at me, okay? Wasn't much of a Star Wars kid. I Okay, I was a... Um, I really, really enjoyed the show The Clone Wars. That was really good growing up, but... Yeah, not enough to know if Emperor Palpatine was a good or a bad guy. Let's be real. We're letting a lot of Ice Bolt cast go off. Also, Ice Shield is kind of just... And that Tectonic Slam is going to hurt a bit. Yeah, we're, our group's letting a lot of stuff go off, but... Honestly, fine. It kind of will give me some good footage to show you guys. How it all works. Yeah, I'm happy with how it went because, um, back to what Marley was saying, I mean, it, it like, is a hard challenge. Like, 3K is, like, not easy, especially on a class that you're just not used to, you know? So I'm happy that we were able to get it on Disc Priest, but the, the problem is, is I could have gotten it on, like, two different healers in the amount of time that it took me to get it on Disc Priest. I just don't think Disc Priest is, like, as pug-friendly as, like, a, a reactive healer. But, um, oh, we forgot to use our, our Broodkeeper's Trinket. So I kind of wish that I would have gotten it on, like, more instead of just the Disc Priest. Okay, he got hit by the, the Smackaroo. We're gonna, we're gonna tether to the, the DH. That way we both get a little bit of verse. I guess I'm not our only lust, so I'm not gonna lust. Got these glacial spikes. It's on me. The the tier set for Shaman is pretty dope though, because it how the two set works is just as long as you have your cloud burst out, you just have like crit damage and crit healing. Like you don't have crit rate, you have crit damage and healing. Um so it's really cool because it just makes your crits do more damage. Um But then your your four piece only works with healing. I'm pretty sure the last time I read it, that's kind of what I got from it. But so you can like put down a uh okay, we we're just getting trucked by these little dudes. We grab grabbed aggro. You put down cloud burst, you're doing like more healing, but you're also just doing more damage, which is pretty dope. I love when they make tier sets help with damage. Also, my dispel. Oh, it's because I didn't click bind it, so we're gonna have to actually click the the tank and dispel them. It's funny. We can work on setting up the click bind here though. What's it called? Purify spirit. Uh, there we go. Now our dispel works. I hear that's important. But yeah, I mean, it it is, it's just, it's very, it was very taxing, the challenge was, if I'm being honest. But we're still gonna, like, we're gonna tick some of the, the goal boxes, you know, but I just don't think we can, we could finish it in time. If I'm being totally honest with myself. I tried Druid, but that was brutal for me. Anything besides Arshami you'd recommend? I think if you're swapping to healing, um, I think... Okay, this guy's terrifying. I hate pulling this mob. Um, but if you're swapping to healing... Uh, Resto Shaman... Oh, God. Resto Shaman, Holy Priest are my two like that I absolutely recommend. How do we have aggro here? What is going on? I could not tell you where our tank is. But yeah, Resto Shaman and Holy Priest, only because they're very reactive, meaning they have a lot of tools. Um, I always say this, they have a lot of tools that are designed to heal people after they've taken damage. Like you can get someone from zero to full 
in like one cast or two casts. Same with Mistweaver though. Um, so yeah, Mistweaver works the same exact way. You know, someone takes big damage, you can vivify them, instant cast vivify and top them up or get them to a safe health level. Um, same with uh, Holy Priest. They have Holy Word um, Serenity, which does like massive spot healing and it's, it's a shock heal. You don't have to cast it, it just instantly happens. They have two charges of it, um, and I believe they're keeping their, their current tier set so they can have like up to like four charges, depending on how many stacks you have, but very solid at just like panic healing someone, which is like always good to, to get used to healing. You have to get used to panic healing because you're going to make mistakes. You're not like, for example, if you're healing a key for the first time, you're going to do a boss mechanic that should have a, a healing cooldown assigned to it. You're going to do it without the, the, the cooldown. You know what I mean? Like you're going to... Pull a boss, he's going to do, like, big damage, and you're going to be like, oh, shit, like, I didn't pop cooldown. Probably should have. So it's good to have tools to plan for that, especially when you're first starting. That's why I would um, absolutely recommend one of those three specs. Um, I think Mistweaver's a lot more beginner-friendly um, when you transition out of that phase, like, out of the beginner phase. You can, um, like, get to, like, mid-tier keys pretty safely, because they have just a lot of... Uh, constant like maintenance healing just keeping people from 90 to 100 percent health pretty easily just by doing your damage yeah one of those three is, is probably the most beginner friendly resto druid is probably the least beginner friendly if you're gonna if i'm being honest it is it, it's always kind of considered difficult just because of how its mechanics work um and because you you just always have more decisions per decision node so like at any given moment should i cast like vivify or should i do like just continue spinning crane kicking you know like that kind of decision node except for druid you also have to take into account all of the the different forms you know what i mean like there's just a lot to think about um but yeah uh valence valency valency said elven ninja seven love your takes on miss weaver thank you i appreciate that i i love the spec I literally, I'll think about it before bed. Like, what could we be doing differently? Is there anything? Uh oh. I don't know. I, I just, I love the spec. Love thinking about it. And I'm glad that I get to share that with you guys. And I'm glad that y'all enjoy it too. I mean, it definitely is. It's, it's like, it's kind of nerve wracking putting your like thoughts on the internet because it can be taken so many different ways. But I appreciate how supportive y'all are, honestly. Flame Gullet? Flame Gullet. That's a name. Let's go into Emperor Palpatine mode really quick. Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt. But yeah, I absolutely love Mistweaver. Uh, is Fist Weaving viable for raid? It especially is in um, Heroic Raid. Because heroic raid, like people get like from if, a, if the tank does a big slam of damage, the group will get topped up a lot quicker. I'm sure you notice that. Like whenever you try to do a Yulon ramp in heroic, it's you just get cut short. You know what I mean? Like there's just only so much healing to be done in heroic, and that giant spiky healing or healing profile is just less desirable in, in heroic than it is in um in mythic. Like in mythic, you need that to combat some boss mechanics. Um, also, it'll be over here so that we bait the fire this way. I kick that. Okay, it looks like we're going back this way though. So maybe I shouldn't have been over here. And we're gonna. I wish the tank would pull it a bit more this way. Yeah, because we can bait the boulder back into the fire that already exists. Like, I do think it's viable. Like, I know there's some guilds that, or like some players that still play it in in Mythic rating. Um, it's just like your ceiling is a lot lower. Like, you just, with the current iteration where bosses are, are designed to do more spiky damage, having a spiky healing profile is just more desirable because it can combat that um, incoming damage a lot better or a lot easier. This is just so scuffed. Um, but boss is dying. Um, 
so yeah the the current like ulon play style is designed for that like once every minute we can handle a mechanic you know like maybe like throwing like a darkness or like a amz or even like a link or something but like we do so much healing in an instant and stuff but yeah fist weaving it's the the profile is more like spread out like you won't have as high peaks and stuff i mean you can like if you still kind of commit a lot of vivifies after your chi g or like in the middle of your chi g but thing about going like a, a full-on chi g build is um you also want to i i think you just get a, a good bit of value from taking the the non one minute um oh what's it called the not get to the celestials but the other one that makes it like still three minutes but makes your masteries like do more healing and stuff like that like that build gets more value from there because you proc mastery more often doing a chi g build um so you, you just get like a lot of reset from it so i mean it's just one it's like a little bit more difficult to line up cooldowns because it's not a set minute every time and two you just can't handle mechanics more often and when you do have chi on like chi can't solo a mechanic quite like um quite like yulon can you know but you could still do a lot of study through but like if, if your raid comp i know there is one of my viewers they might be um in here right now but one of my viewers says that their mythic raiding comp consists of two healing monks and one of them is like a chi you know quote fist weaver style monk and the other one is a yulon monk and they say that like that works out really well for them because if they had two yulon monks one of them would just get shafted because like they would get kind of the downtime as their ramps whereas the other one or, or like they'd have to stack their ramps and stuff um but the way it works out is like the the fist weaving makes like the constant steady throughput feel a lot better and then the um the other monk handles like the big ramps or does like the traditional what what we're used to seeing from monks yeah i mean like you can you can do whatever you want just know that like you you likely won't heal as much um and you're you're kind of shorting yourself but you'll do a lot of damage like maybe that's what you need is like you have you could literally your guild could probably three heal a fight but um you have a fourth healer and it's like why not you know what i mean like maybe that's the case who knows it's it's all dependent on what your guild looks like but I would say, I think that's my point. I uh, remember we need to um, watch where we're standing on this fight. And watch out for the DH, watch out for the roar. Also need to dispel the tank or he will die. Yeah, we need to watch where these winds are coming from. Oh, I got tagged. So since I got tagged, we are going to drop near the edge. Yeah, this boss was such a nightmare. Ooh, someone actually pulled that over there. That's a yikes. I'm gonna kick that cast. I'm gonna dispel the tank when I get the chance. I'm excited to read chat though. I see a lot of people pouring in. A lot of new faces too. It's it's always nice seeing like new people in chat. It just means, I don't know, it's, it's like the start of like a new friendship. You know, like when you come to ooh, you come to school on the first day and like, I don't know, you get assigned seating. This is like going back a long time to like kids school, but you get assigned a seat next to someone you never talked to before. And it's just like, oh, cool. And then like y'all become best friends. It's kind of like that, you know. Uh, Hello for all guys. Mahdi, hello. Mahdi and Mohammadi, welcome in. Um... Trying to decide if I want my main alt to be either druid or shaman. Just honestly, if it's your alt, unless you're also like mythic raiding on it, I would always recommend pick what makes you have the most fun, what what you have the most fun while playing it. So if you have more fun while playing druid, by all means, like don't let don't like ask someone like me, like, hey, what should my alt be? Honestly, your alt is designed to kind of like relax your mind, like take it more chill and like you know just take a break from your main whenever you need that so uh why not showing healing in details i did a fresh re reinstall of the ptr because that's how um that's how for some reason my sound wasn't working the last time i streamed um for ptr so i had to completely reinstall it so a lot of stuff wasn't working when i turned on the stream and one of the things was i forgot to swap one of those to healing i appreciate you for uh reminding me I say Valen, kind of like Valen, but with a V. 
uh, let's find another key. So we've got, we have plenty of Algathor footage. We need Nakode, but this guy has kind of shown that he's not gonna, ooh, we need Uldamon, that'd be fun. Uldamon 12 though. We just did a plus two, so a plus 12 is, is definitely a spike. I got a lot of chats to catch up on, but yeah, welcome in everyone, happy Monday. Um, love seeing you here, glad you guys are, are spending time with me. Uh, that was another I was considering. I just, th I'm thinking, just thinking of Shadow versus Ellie for off spec. Don't really have time for alts anymore. So you're saying like you don't know what you should main. I think if you're looking for a main, um, having one that has more variety is, is always better. So like if you're debating between Shaman and Holy Priest, Shaman can give you like way different play styles. You know what I mean? Like you have a melee, you have a ranged DPS, and you have a healer. Whereas like this priest, it's like, yeah, you have, or I'm sorry, Holy Priest, you, you have this priest, which is just another healer DPS hybrid. And then, I don't know. So it, honestly, just pick what, what makes you the most happy. If, the, if you're just starting healing, don't listen to what's meta. Just just play what can help you learn the game best. Um, and then once you kind of get more comfortable to where you can push um, more things, you know, you can you can look to, to pick more meta things if that's what you, you care about. But if you're just learning the game, working to get your first plus 10 done, and then your first, you know, plus 15, or I guess in this case, like plus 5, plus 10, then, yeah. Uh, do you plan on to upload a VOD on your Fire Act kill? I do, I do. Um, I do, I just need to take the time to voice over it because I spent all weekend, I'm working on a series of videos that's going to come out when s Season 4 drops, which I don't really do this. I'm, I've never really, in the past, like pre-made content like I'm trying to do right now, and it's a lot. It, it is a lot, but that took up like every spare minute of my my weekend um i just haven't had the time to sit down and talk about what happened in it but i do think I'll, I'll i'll look to do that either tonight or tomorrow and have it up the next day um but yeah i mean it, it wasn't like a super special kill especially if y'all watch my other fire rack video like i had been cranking healing all of Prague, and then like on my on our actual kill like i just like played it safe honestly i was like i don't care about my parse i just want to kill the boss so I like did a lot less healing in P1 and 2. That way I'd have more mana for P3. And then P3 came and it was only like our fifth time seeing it. Uh if I'm it it was like five times, but um I straight up panicked. I did. I, I panicked. So I'm excited to show you guys that. Like I made a lot of mistakes in P3. Um, but I think they were mistakes that ended up being good for the greater good of the the kill. And um like, for example, I summoned Yulon. I don't think I pressed a single enveloping miss. Like, if I'm being honest, like, I can't remember. Like, it was all a blur. But I'm excited to show that to you guys, to show you guys, like, hey, I made a lot of mistakes here. And, you know, I feel like a lot of YouTubers would only upload, like, their best kill, you know. But I don't, I don't like doing that. I mean, to be fair, this is our only kill so far. But we're looking to kill it again, um, like tomorrow night or Thursday night, because we have like a, I think we have like a 21st raid member. We have like 21 on our roster all throughout the tier, so we want to get all 21, like, um, cutting edge if we can. Speaking of that, we do need a, a fire rack lockout, I think. So if any of your guilds have kind of like killed Tendril and then petered out or just like given up on, on fire rack, and you're on NA, we have, we have a bunch of EU people that have that as the case, but if y'all have a fire a mythic fire rack lock out, hit me up. Uh, hey, clear so, how's it going? I, is it clear so or clear so? Cle I'm just gonna say it weird. Clearzo, that's your new name. No, I'm kidding. Um, how come you're doing shaman today? Seen a few people trying it. Uh, been changes to them? No, I mean they they are going back to their season one tier set, so that's probably it. But um. Not honestly, it's just because I've been playing. I played a lot of Mistweaver on stream, and I do plan on playing more Mistweaver later on in this stream. Uh, but we're just just changing things up. I just kind of clicked on the the first name that drew my attention. Um, I guess I should lust this. We're gonna poison cleansing totem. Pick that stun. But now it's just a, it's a a good time. I, I do plan on playing Mistweaver today too. So, um, if that's what you're here for, don't don't worry. You're not. There's no bigger reason other than I just kind of clicked on it, if I'm being totally honest. 
Um, I mean, it is a good time, but let's be real, Monk's infinitely more fun than anything else in the game. Look at that, a pretty clean pool. We gotta help the tank, though, as he walks, because still taking some damage. Uh, let's see, Patrizo said, Patrizio, I don't know, I don't know how to say your name. Um, hello, kind of a weird question. I am all for weird questions. Whoa, I don't like that, though. Hold up, let me not die really quick. Yeah, there's no, like, they didn't, they're, they're not, like, buffing. As far as I know, they're not, like, buffing Shaman. I think people are just trying out, like, all the healers, and, and they, they probably just move to this one for now now they were really good season one no way it was season one was druid and preservation evoker i want to say that were meta is that right and then um season two was shaman but that was because they had buffed the mess out of shaman coming into season two i think or like chain heal was, was that the season two thing uh, okay anyways kind of a weird question what healer would you say plays similar to evoker do you mean similar to like augmentation evoker or similar to prez evoker what healer plays similar to Evoker? If you're just talking about like, like all the movement and stuff, like Mistweaver is like pretty mobile in terms of like when you're fighting, you kind of do zip around the place, kind of like Evoker. Like some Evoker players do, they just they they just be dashing, you know, like for no reason too. Sometimes an Evoker will just dash because they can. Whoa, we're gonna die. We're definitely dead here. Um. But as far as like healing profile, oh my goodness, dude, this was terrifying. I don't remember that like hurting that much. But normally, you, don't you like come up here for this phase? Did we face tank a cleave before that? But as far as healing wise, ooh, don't like that. Um, man, not a lot of classes play similar to. I can't heal the hunter. Not a lot of classes play similar to Evoker. They're very unique. Like the whole um, Echo play style and stuff. I guess I, I probably would say the... Ooh, don't like that. The closest to it has got to be Mistweaver. Because the closest thing to like Echo and, you know, Cleave, like Cleaving like that has got to be... Um, can you LOS this? Let's test it. No, you cannot. He threw a shield through a wall. You saw it here first. But it's it's got to be like the way Echo kind of is like renewing mist and um, whoa vivifies like the the way to cash in on that whoa we're dead we are so dead I got nothing I reincarn after this maybe get the kill wow I did not play my cooldowns for that that does big damage let's reincarn here we're gonna wait till he gets off the ship. Baylog, buddy, come down. Yeesh. Hey, we got some some new people chatting. What's up, guys? Oh God, clear so okay. Um, Nick's here. Nick's one of my guildies, one of our our newest recruits. Um, definitely one of the the best new recruits I've seen from any of the guilds that I've been in. Like came in hot. So shout out to Nick. Congrats. Also, I I rest literally as soon as that this phase started. So, um, oops. But grad Snick also on the cutting edge. I kind of just res to panic heal myself. That's all that we're doing. I got a fat cloud burst, though. I guess cloud burst does like big healing when it's just you and one other person alive. Can we do this? I don't think so, dude. We are getting smacked. We can cast while healing, or cast while moving, but no, that was that was brutal. Uh, let's see. We'll give butterfly kisses for North America Mythic Firac lockout. Yeah, if if y'all have a lockout, Nick will give you a butterfly kiss. Uh, Culpa nine Culpa nine nine said. Oh, also, when did augmentation become healer role? Played it in season two, and it was a DPS role. I don't I don't think it's healer role, is it? Did I miss that? I thought it was like it's. Classified as DPS, but it's a support role, right? Did they change that? I don't think they changed that. Maybe I just missed it, because that is a pretty massive change to do, but 
<clears throat> for the most part, with how much they buff DPS, I don't see that they would ever make that change. But yeah, Voker is very unique in how it heals. But I would definitely say like just how, how mobile you have to be during fights and how it kind of um, does its healing based on like a, a certain buff that it applies and stuff. It, it definitely is, I would say, most like Mistweaver. Let me know what y'all think. What what other healer do you think is most like a preserv preservation invoker? All right, official Lobsidy, of official Obsidy said, "Hello, sorry for bothering you. It's no bother at all. I actually appreciate when you guys chat. So, um, no bother whatsoever. Except for, hold on, I think you're actually asking about a promotion. So that is pretty bothersome. I want to offer promotion of your channel viewers followers." The price is lower, buddy. I make less than minimum wage. <laughs> Literally, if if y'all no, I I don't know how to turn off that comment, but yeah, it it wouldn't it would not even be an option if I were interested, because buying views and all that stuff is is um very useless. If you if you buy like say you bought like five thousand views on one video, it wouldn't make all of your other videos do better. You know, it would just kind of inflate that one and then it would kind of make your channel look worse you know so <laughs> yeah no no thank you uh yeah it's a dps roll still yeah um og is a healing roll they buff mistweavers on the move <laughs> no it's still a dps roll dude i mean honestly <laughs> hey they need to start if i don't get a prescience i'm gonna i'm gonna throw a fit no, honestly, it like prescience on a healer like for big damage mechanics. Why isn't that a conversation? Like at least put prescience. It's what is it, like seven percent crit. Like we can we can get that right. We can get that. No, that wipe definitely came from me kind of just not being like not remembering the boss there. But also I think someone DC. But we're we're fine. Uh, Evoker has skill shot heals as far as I know, which is the only class that has this. Um, skill shot heals. Hey, technically priests do with divine star. You kind of have to, you know, if you if you target this enemy, you have to kind of like move to make it shoot through your your allies. That that's a skill shot, right? What other classes? I mean, hey, Miss Weaver with chi burst, it does healing. So, no, that's completely not on the same level. I know exactly what you mean, but evoker is just it. It's got to be in a class of its own. The only thing that I can relate is like. Echo kind of works like Renewing Mist and Vivify, like Invigorating Mist. Like if you Echo Tom and then heal Sally, Tom gets whatever heal you did in the Sally because that's how Echo works. But same with like kind of Renewing Mist in like some roundabout way. If you Renewing Mist Tom, Vivify Sally, Tom gets cleaved by, by Invigorating Mist. So that's like the only... I mean, maybe you could also, I guess you could say the same thing about like atonement, but not, not really. It's just evoker so unique and that's kind of why I enjoy it. I do think though, uh, with what Aba Abashi 1210 says, the skill shot aspect is, is, um, definitely what turns people off of the class, including myself. So, um, all right, when we go again, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, I saw an Ogvoker set as a healer. He probably, like, queued up your key as Augmentation Evoker, and then when he joined, he was in Prez spec. And um, it just showed as, like, double healing icons, and then, like, before the key started, at some point, he probably swapped to Og. Um, yeah. It's a support DPS, but they have the same healing spells as a dev. You just see Og do some healing since their support, and after buffing, uh, they don't have... To DPS a ton right away at times and they also have the scales thing that I don't know if it shows up as any amount of healing but they like shield the tank and, and apply scales that reflect some damage that the tank does or gets taken back at the thing or something um, all right let's uh let's run it back also I don't know what it is that usually shows me the the like the icons here like of the consumables i need to pop 
Y'all know that one? It's like, it might, might be a weak aura, but it didn't import. All the weak auras that I have on PTR are just some of my healer loadouts. Um, hey, what's up, Boldizar? How are you doing? Welcome in. Uh, you know, said, sorry to bother you. Once again, no, no need to apologize. I love reading chats. And I love talking to you guys. So, um, it is not a bother. Uh, sorry to bother you. I was watching your Mistweaver raid healing guide and can't find a statue weak aura anywhere. Is there any chance I could grab it? Yes. It's if you, um, you know, are you in my discord at all? Uh, Jeremiah said, yes, y'all are live. <laughs> Omega catch up. Um, you guys, you guys are live. Uh, oh, I'm supposed to, you're so fast. Tank, you're so fast. I can't. Oh, you're so fast. I'll just put it there so that when he turns around, he'll be like, oh, maybe it was down. It wasn't. We're also not supposed to be attacking right now. Um, oops. The tank is taking heavy damage and I just died immediately. What the heck? Trying to get a, um, maybe I had to aggro on something. I was trying to get a spirit link totem to help out the tank, but it turns out, dude, the tank was chilling. Maybe that's what got me killed. But then I was going to put down a stun totem, which we're, we're just going to go ahead and slam down. We're also going to totemic recall it so we can cast it again. Let's kick a oh, good grip. Um, but yeah, YouTube chat's live. I, um, I was just responding. Oh my God. Why did I get hit by that? Um, I was responding to a, a Twitch comment that time. First time catching you live. Hey, well, welcome in Omega Ketchup. That's like a, it's a true gamer name. Oh man. I have so many chats to catch up on, but yeah, it, uh, you know, if you go into my discord, which if you type exclamation point discord, you'll see a link to get in. Uh, there is a channel in my Discord called My UI. Also, did we not lust? Uh oh. Yeah, we're gonna, definitely going to save all of our CDs for that big phase. Um, we also need to mark the tank. But there is a, a channel called My UI, and it has all of my weak ores that I use, like, or at least most of them. It doesn't have, like, my shaman and, like, all my ugly ones. But it has, like, the majority of my weak ores in there. And um, one of them that I know is in there is my, my, the statue, we, it's not my weak ore, it's just one that I use. But it's the, the, um, the statue weak ore that I use is in there. All right, so we popped a cooldown there. I don't like where I'm standing, if I'm being honest. I, I want to be up there with the priest. That's usually where you want, want to end that phase, but it's kind of just... This is just more hectic than I remember. We're going to right-click a, a Warlock cookie, because I don't have a key bound on PTR. They call me the Skull Cracker. I yeah, definitely like lusting here. I don't know what our affixes are. It's fortified. Maybe we changed that. Coming into this dungeon, because that definitely felt way easier. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> he accidentally took the, the gate. Uh, I'm going to attempt to be top five uh, Mistweaver on my server in season four. Got to 3k for first time ever this season. Hey, you got this. Honestly, just keep at it. And and grind like you have a goal in mind, you know. That's one thing that I, I haven't done yet is, is really push on one character. And I, I do definitely want to try. <clears throat> but season fours are always kind of weird. But um, in one way, that's kind of a good thing. Because this could be like the best time to push, you know. But I definitely also want to join you in that push and, and try to... I, I really want to see if I can get like a high rating on my... on something. Like leaderboard, I want to get like title, at least you know. But the hard thing is, is that I pug every key, and I feel like I would need to get a, a good little push group together, and I might be able to hit up some guildies and see if they want to at least push at the start of a season. Uh, so what trinkets are we testing? You know what? Thanks for reminding me. We are testing 
Um, Brewkeeper's Promise, which I don't have on anyone, which we're going to tether to the, the uh, some, whoever I just clicked, the Warlock maybe. And we are testing Rashox right now. But after the dungeon, I want to see just how much mana return we get, which there, it's not really a good... Like, testing Rashox in a Mythic Plus environment is just weird. It's it's hard to get, like, good data from it, because you run Rashox in Raid more than you run it in Mythic Plus, so so you can't really draw that many conclusions, except for, like, how many times it procced for a minute. But even then, it's like, see how many damage spells I'm casting? You just don't cast that many in Raid. Um, and Rashox only procs off of healing spells. Let's get a stun totem down. Our tank is just taking a pounding. I'm gonna cast ancestral guidance since there are a lot of ads. We need to warlock friend. Very nice. I hate how. I've changed this on live, but y'all can see the, what is that? Not DBM. What's the other one? Um, Big Wigs is blocking like half my spells. It's not like that on live. I had changed it, but when I re, <clears throat> when I re-imported everything over into PTR, it kind of messed up some things. So maybe if, if, if I remember after this key, we'll, we'll get that fixed. Stay with us, Warlock. All right, we're, we're slamming. What is this? It's still a 12, though. Honestly, this feels a lot better. I feel like that first boss, dude, that, that boss hurts more than I remember it does. Or that I remember it did. Another quaking totem. Up our cloudburst totem. Ooh, stay with us, friend. Yeah, we are just we're just slamming a shaman key for now, just just cause it sounded fun. We'll be hopping between alts today. Bring out the Mistweaver for a bit. Loved your recent trinket video. Wanted to try some hybrid DPS slash healing trinkets like Kyrakis Searing Embers. Oh, there's a lot of hype around that trinket right now. But they nerfed it? Oh, maybe there's not. A, I take back what I just said. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm just trying anything and everything, seeing what I like the most. You know what surprised me is the Sinarth trinket. The spider trinket. Um, that you web someone, you just have to like cleave on them and stuff and just do big damage. That trinket has really shocked me at how much it can do. Also, Borelaros, I didn't have that on live. Um, it does so much damage, but I guess like in higher keys, it does become like more of a risk than something like, um, like I'd rather do half as much damage while also getting a giant shield, you know? So Firax is still definitely going to be like the play if I, if I decide to push high keys and stuff. Um, okay, this boss, I remember, was a nightmare. So, Crushing Stomp. That's where we need to heal. Make sure everyone's fully topped up for Crushing Stomp. And I am just playing super safe. I'm going to have heals down. Also, he's about to go angry. So, we need to just make sure our Riptides are spread. When he goes over... He starts getting a little angry. That's when... uh. Earthen Shard's on me, so pop a defensive, let's pop a Warlock Stone, Crushing Stomp, so we're going to cast while we're moving. Go and throw down our Totem. Oof. Yeah, definitely, you definitely want to track Earthen Shards. That is definitely the killer here. You need to be able to do both AoE and single target healing. Earthen Shards on me again. Oh, no. Whew. 
think it's just healing surge. Why am I healing waving? Uh, no, that was that was all bad on me. I was like, I don't have to cast into myself because I thought that I had just seen earthen shards go on someone. Um, but it hadn't, so it it chose me again while I was already low. That was bad play on my pot. Okay, this guy's get, taking a smacking. Uh, the tank is stunned. No. Whew, dude, this boss is wild. I also can't see my cooldowns, which I hate. Go to some damage, crushing stomp. Earthen shards on me again. Oof. I guess I have my defensive, but. Brother. I was killing that guy. I had earthen shards. Oh, that's tragic. I got clipped by it. This boss is always hard. I'm definitely going to have to practice this boss a lot. I didn't know I was alive. I, I literally thought I was dead. <laughs> Dang, that is that is bad. All me though. I definitely played that horribly. Oof. Uh let's see. Uh wanted to try some of the trinkets that wasn't available for Mistweavers previously, like the Augury OG Primal Flame or uh Augury of Primal Primal Flame or free damage or bell. Bellorellos. Yeah, they're all pretty powerful and they all do pretty pretty big damage. Um so yeah, everyone's like talking about how much this boss hurts, dude. Boss claps you. And there are enough ores he can just like chain stun the boss. I'm pretty sure you like save your stuns for like as he gets like big. And I'm pretty sure you can like use your actual stuns on this boss, right? Or is that not real? Um, please tell me Holy Paladin will be better next season. No, they're going back to their tier set though that I, I really did like, but um, yeah, I just I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, it's it's just that they've they've really gutted how much like every healing source that they do does and how much like tankiness they apply to the group and stuff. They've just gutted everything around it where it's just like it's hard for it to be as good, you know. Um, I find Preservation of Ochre to be uh, the most fun, but also the most stressful. Yeah, it definitely is stressful when you have to fly all over the map to get anything done. Um, brutal. Yeah, they're talking about how good Dwarf is this season. Yeah. You can remove the bleed if it gets put on you. Dude, that thing hurts. Druid has an AoE skill shot type of thing. Feyline. Hey, yeah, J Fire Stomp. That's a skill shot. Barrier. It's a skill shot. Um, yeah, Druid, you're saying Efflorence is, is a skill shot? That's funny. Um, I, I am loving Shaman, Ellie, and Resto. Push about 3.3k as Resto, and the amount of CC you have is amazing in pugs. Yeah, Resto Shaman's like the the pug carry healer, it seems like. Right click the name and ban. It, do, it just doesn't let me on Streamlabs <clears throat> ban them. Uh, Prez has Temporal Anomaly and... Spirit Bloom, Spirit Bloom, is that a skill shot? I don't know, Spirit Bloom. I think Emerald Blossom's a skill shot. This boss is terrifying. <clears throat> um, but yeah, Shaman, dude, Shaman's such a good time. Our Holy Paladin is pumping on Fire Fire Rack. Yeah, Holy Paladin looks really good on Fire Rack. 
it's it does good raid healing. I think people like forget that, but that's also kind of why they had nerfed it because like it it was having the best of both worlds, you know. Um, yeah, especially on fire egg, it has a good profile for it because like I don't know, I just I, you see a lot of holy Thotans or people swap to their holy Thotan for that fight just because of their their little healing profile is really good for it. They can heal on the move really well without using cooldown, so like they can snipe a lot of the ramp healing that other specs are getting. Um, yeah, also like only like a few people take like meaningful damage in P1 uh, outside of the big boss mechanics, so they can just like snipe up that healing pretty nicely. But like in Mythic Plus, I'm just saying like. They used to provide so much survivability and CC and just like um, utility while also being able to top up the group very quickly. Uh, but then they, they definitely did a lot to mitigate that. Um, moving out of 10.1.7, which they still haven't fully found their, their Mythic Plus power back um, ever since then. But... Yeah, that's where we're at. Also, watching out for the cleaves, because I, I just all I remembered when I rounded this corner was pretty sure this next pack had a cleave. Also, in this next room, we want to make sure and have like cooldowns popped, because you definitely don't want to sit on cooldowns while your group dies to this next pack, because it is a scary one. But yeah, now like Rustor Shaman's kind of like it does what Holy Paladin did back then, but like to a much lesser extent. You just have so much utility. You're just like a lot squishier than Holy Paladin was back then. So, while well, also watching out for cleaves, we are going to be. Whoa. Whoa. Popping cooldowns. Whoa. Pretty sure you can LOS that, right? Is that the thing that you can LOS, or am I like misremembering I don't know dude it has been so long since I've been in here earthquake can you LOS I don't think you can LOS yeah you definitely want cooldowns rolling for earthquake I remember that I would literally cycle um Shaloons and um cheesy on that every time because i was like i am not risking it also i feel like either a shaman pulled or he's just getting chunked by his burning rush in the old speed totem this hallway poison cleansing is gonna be really good i do think um also one of the reasons why evoker did really well in these seasons is because bleed dispels are like really good um, versus a lot of these bosses and stuff. That's why people swapped to, to Drew or to Dwarf the season two. I don't know what what the Shaman or the Warlock pulled, but you hate to see it. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> I'll go Resum after after combat. Um, let's see. What affixes are on these keys? Um, it looks like just fortified. People, for some reason, people don't like testing affixes on the PTR. I am not that kind of person. Whenever I queue up the key, I always put like an on death affix. Uh, so like sanguine and um, just another affix, like an easy one, like entangling at least, you know, but I don't like doing no affixes. I just think it's always, why did he go this way? What? Where is he? Uh, I think it's always like good to see when um, or like what has on death mechanics and what certain affixes affect and stuff. All right, let's get going. I was using Beacon heaps in season two. Uh, and it was sick in Mythic Plus. Yeah, do you mean Beacon of Virtue? Because I wonder if they're going to go back to that. I loved Beacon of Virtue. 
but then again, how can I not pick Diana's Promise or Brewkeeper's Promise? I mean, I always call it Diana's too. But I love Brewkeeper's Promise. It is like one of my favorite trinkets ever, just because it's so simple. It just sits there, rolls hots on you, and gives you bursts. Like, what else can you ask for, you know? I agree, Ketchup. Oh, goodness, this boss, dude. I am forgetting. I remember it's bullet hell. We have to run around the room, but I forget, like, what is it that I use my cooldowns on? It's the debuff. Okay. And we need to say spread for this while also watching that. Yeah, this boss was very frustrating to do pugs with. They did make it a lot more visible, though. Um, oh, yeah, my bad. I'm not used to lusting. Put down a, a healing totem. Oopsies. Yeah, they made these a lot more visible. Dude, the amount of people that would die to those. Oh, man, it was so frustrating. I wish every healer had um, Spirit Walker's Grace. There's this... Uh, this like conversation that I keep hear hearing, I keep hearing being had. I, I hear is had often. I don't know how to say that, but hopefully you guys are, are picking up what I'm putting down. But I hear a conversation happening on like podcasts on like tank players, YouTubes and stuff. But it's about how in Final Fantasy every single tank spec has the same cooldown. So like they all have the same one defensive and like same one. They, like they just have the same stuff and it's kind of like how in this game every healer has the same um like we all have not the same dispel but we all have a dispel whoa brother we all have like a dispel and it's it's kind of similar um to that but what i was thinking oh no what's happening I, I literally, I can't finish that thought. I have no idea what I was saying. Oh, 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 oh. But I think there should be something, and they're all like, every tank should have like bark skin, you know, like, or they should all have like this, like one basic cool, like defensive just added. And like, although that, that I mean, that's cool and all, I don't know, people, people don't really like that idea. But I think all the healers should get Spirit, Spirit Walker's Grace. It's just such a quality of life. And maybe like it's like a lesser cooldown for shamans, but dude, it's just it's it makes playing shamans so much better. If, if for those that don't know, Spirit Walkers is the uh, it's the ability that lets me like cast while moving every now and then. So I'll, I'll cast it right here. So now I can just like ca I can cast Chain Heal while walking around, you know. Um, and it's only up like once every minute and a half, but like see for that, like I can just dodge that mechanic safely and be fine. Ooh. How did, how did he die? That boss, not that bad. I'm not gonna lie, not that bad. That boss is really annoying though when you're um, like as the healer and one person doesn't stay with the group during the rotating phase and you just slowly see them chip down, you know? Uh, how's the mana on Shaman in PTR? Honestly, pretty good. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever had mana issues on the Shaman. I mean, I guess I have, but honestly not that bad and especially because like your your this current tier set that you play on ptr is a little bit better on mana in my opinion because oh what are we doing you heal more um i do not like pulling these guys up here because we can't los but um the old tier set really encouraged just like casting random healing spells when people didn't need healing you know uh, but this one thunderous clap that's what you los you hate to see it. We're just reincarning. Why are, Why do we pull these guys up here? Can you LOS on these totems? I thought those totems were like bugged or just like you couldn't LOS there. Maybe, I, maybe I'm not right there, but. Thunder's Clap, I always, I, I always pulled that at that corner down there, the stairs. You just tiptoe around the corner, you know. Um, let's see. Yeah, the range thing. Yeah, 
Evokers have so much working against them that they kind of need to be like really powerful for people to want to play them, you know? So Thunderous Clap, I guess you can LOS these pillars. I literally just, I'm not used to pulling these guys here. I'm so used to pulling them on that corner. So that is just my bad for dying there. That was horrible play. But now we're we're back. And I, I can while I'm LOSing, I can cast Stormkeeper and come back in and just zip zap these fools. But yeah, I think this 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 um tier set encourages like having to cast less to heal people up because you just heal more while your totem's out. So like you just pop your totem and then like do like less healing spells and people get topped. Um and then also you're not just like Always casting random spells just to have your, your tier set on people. If that makes sense. Ooh, this pool was really annoying. This pool caused so many wipes. Um, also, like, pulling all of these guys together is kind of wild. A lot of damage, right? Put our totem down just for more damage. Stormkeeper. All right, more golems. It's LOS in time. Where's the tank? Pulling these guys too. Not a cloud burst. But how are y'all doing? How's your weekend go? I know myself, we we got together with um some of my wife's family members for like a family get together because one of them is graduating from cosmetology school. So it was just to celebrate her, but it was so awesome. Like I, I absolutely cannot tell you guys how much I like value just spending time with her family. Like it's such a great family and I don't know, it's just those little things that kind of like, you know, your mom, you know how like, I don't know if y'all's moms are like this, but my mom is like really corny, like really corny growing up. But she's like, that just makes my heart happy. I get what she means now. I really do. These things, those days like that, like I, they just make my heart happy, you know, and like kind of recharge my batteries, you know. Um, also that, that cousin that we, we went to like celebrate is really funny. So yeah. Yeah, Beacon of Virtue was dope when it was a thing. Also, the old of Avenging Wrath, the one that kind of turned them into like a big fist weaver, the the one before it was nerfed, that was so much fun. When that plus Beacon of Virtue were like meta, that was so fun, dude. But oh, have times changed. Gotta kick that. Yeah, sorry to throw a random stray at my own mother, <laughs> calling her lame. Mom, if you're watching, I'll take it back. No, I'm kidding. She would know what I meant. Oh, Beacon of the Beyond. Oh, pfft. that's what you're talking about. Okay, sorry. Yeah, Beacon of the Beyond is, like, insane. That was my go-to trinket. Um, I begged my group to get it, and I, I unfortunately lost, like, every roll whenever we kill Sarkareth. Um, but then... I uh, I got it from the vault, and I was like, oh, yes. Dude, I loved that trinket. Okay, these guys, I remember they had gotten nerfed uh, when this was current content, but let's see. Yeah, you can LOS to drop your stacks, but honestly, we're, we're kind of chilling. Hasten, though, we got to watch out for that. Yeah, see right there, just I'm pretty sure like any amount of CC you can kind of slow down the stacks. Oh no 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 no. We got we got master spelled, never mind. Get the hastened. Just be rolling dispels on our on the squad. 
or the Time Reaver. Now dispel the tank. You don't want these stacks to get too high. Let's read it while we're doing this. Haste is reduced per stack. So we have three stacks, so haste reduced by 6%. Then we'll go up to, oh, I guess we go to down. Never mind. Debuff. Yes, we know there's a debuff. But also people um, on the PTR, there's like a lot of different like mindsets. Like myself, I like to let cast go off and like I'm totally fine wiping on the PTR because it, it, it allows me to kind of like test things more. Like I like to see just how much damage the big one shot cast goes or does if it ever goes off, you know. Or like I like to let Croth and, and Algothar Academy stack up to like five times, you know, just to see if you can survive it. But people will like still kind of have that mindset of of live or current WoW where they'll they will leave the group. All right, we're gonna LOS drop our stacks and we'll be casting Storm Reaver while we do it. But yeah, our stacks go off. We can dispel the hunter and look, chilling. Of course, I immediately step out to multiple stacks. But yeah, make sure your tank is dispelled primarily because he cannot LOS. But you and, and the, the DPS can still have that luxury. Got a master spell from the homie. You can dispel the priest. Coming up on the final boss. Honestly, there were a couple like pain points in this dungeon. Honestly, it's the same old um, stuff that's that's been difficult. And I'm not looking forward to this boss because this boss used to be kind of like one of my least favorite parts in the dungeon. But yeah, some of the parts are still difficult that used to be difficult. Like man, that the orb boss is it definitely has a skill skill floor too. Like. You definitely have to be used to it. But this boss was always weird. I've never done this boss on Shaman, so I'm, I'm kind of excited to see it. I don't think I was supposed to lust there. I think I lust during the accelerated phase. Woo. The damage amp phase, I guess. Wing Buffet. Why did that one do so much? Maybe it's because there was still a debuff on someone. Oh, the debuff is like a slow too, right? Can't you? Pretty sure you can like slow a unit, right? Because I'm pretty sure I would Tiger's Lust one person. Maybe I'm maybe I've got that wrong. Whoop. Wing Buffet. Everyone always like wonders, is it Wing Buffet or Wing Buffet? And like still no one knows. Ah, stay with us. Okay. We have a I'm pretty sure we have a fat. Yeah, Cloudburst was saved up. Okay, we're gonna drop Cloudburst. It is nice when people kind of stack together, but this boss does swirly up pretty quickly. Oh no. That's gonna hurt. We're definitely gonna pump some healing during this phase, but get as much damage off as we can. Man, I wish I could see my cooldowns better. Drop, uh, we don't have any cooldown. We have an ancestral. Now we have cloudburst. No, the hunter, you're ranging. Hunter. Here we go. Yeah, we played this fight really bad. You usually want to like work your way around the room. But we definitely didn't kill the boss in time. Mm 
Die! I got scared thinking he was about to wing buff it, but now he went for a sand breath. We did it. We didn't time it, but we did it. Uh, all right. Wait, did we time it? Three seconds of overtime now. Yeah, that fight is rough, dude. Rough, rough, rough. This dungeon, the bosses, this is going to be a tough, tyrannical dungeon for sure, for sure. All right, let's catch up on chat. Uh, let's see. The most hated ability for me is Verdant Embrace. I really hope they rework it. Oh, it's rough. Uh, oh, this guy said great, great tanking and healing. I think you. These bosses are brutal. Um. Yeah, Verdant Embrace is weird, but like the more you practice and get used to like echoing them that need the healing, and then Verdant Embracing yourself, it's good. Uh, but also, Nev, welcome in. I didn't even see your chat up there, but I'll see you now. Gotta change to Dwarf. Yeah, let's fight. This dungeon hurts. Uh, yeah, Beacon to the Beyond is, is a disgusting trinket. I think all the healers should have roughly the same range. Yeah, I mean, that is definitely a take that people have, that all healers should kind of... But but the, the whole point is they want every healer to like feel different. But on that argument, on the other side of that argument, it's like you want all healers to feel different, but that doesn't mean you want some to feel worse. But I guess you can't make them feel different without having them feel better or worse, you know, um, is, is I guess the other take. You see how, how hard those bosses hit, dude? I feel like you're just going to have to have Fire Axe for some of these or be a dwarf. Those dwarfs have like a built-in defensive slash like bleed removal. That's pretty important. Um, you're right. You can shift to Ghost Wolf if you have the slow removal talented. Oh, the the snare, the um, what's it called like Thunder Paws or something like that. <laughs> uh, what's it called? This one? No, no. What is it called, man? Thunder Paws. Where is it? I know it's like over here somewhere. Nope. No, it's this one. No. Thunderous Pauls, yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah. I remember I would, whenever those debuffs would get applied, I would pop Chigi, uh, Tiger's Lust one person, and then Dispel the other person. Or if that if all those weren't up, I would try to revival them. Yeah, you need to like get that debuff off everyone. Um, I would play Prez if their range was near the same. I feel like a lot of people would. Um, to be totally honest, let's hop on the Mistweaver and let's slam a Mistweaver key. What do you guys say? The Hunter put up pretty good numbers and even more than the the Priest. And Priests do big damage, so. It's 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 weird right now. I don't know what's going to be meta, but from what I've seen, like, Devastation Evokers do, like, crazy damage um, in Season 4. Um, so do Shadow Priests, but, oh man, all of our... Profiles are all wacky. See what I mean? Like I have to kind of reset everything as we load in. All right. I think that's everything. But yeah, we also our weak cores are going to be all buggy. So, all right, let's find a key. We've done. We're we're trying to get a a key of each dungeon. So let's do. We did a Ruby Life Pools earlier. We need like footage of, of all the dungeons, basically. Ideally good footage. It doesn't have to be like a super difficult key, if, if I'm being totally honest. It just has to be the dungeon done. Our bags are hideous, just don't look at them. Ooh, Neltheris, ooh. You know what? Let's do it, Neltheris. Let's do like a Neltheris like eight. Nothing, nothing like too brutal, because Neltheris is rough. I, I, I'm, I'm, Valuing footage over like pushing right now, so um, because some of these dungeons like Neltheris I have not done yet on the PTR. Um, it's Neltheris, let's make it a eight. Neltheris eight, no affixes, just 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 cuz. Um, 
Aetherius plus eight. Y'all can feel free to join up these keys, by the way, guys. If y'all want to play alongside me, show off your damage or your tanking. Um, but yeah, dude, the range for evokers, the the fact that your best like instant spot heal. If you need to spot heal someone in one global, you have to vert and embrace them, or else you just have to rely on like golden hour proc to be big enough or something. So like, but if you only if you have enough time for two globals to top someone up, yeah, you can always echo them to invert and embrace yourself. That way you don't risk putting yourself in danger. But like the higher you get in keys, the more you just like the less you have the luxury of having um two globals or time for two globals. So that is definitely something just like weird about the class that people don't like. Um what do we want to run? You know what 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 could be a pretty cool combo is like Broodkeeper's Promise for like the Rolling Hot, the Verse, and then like something like Screaming Black Dragon Scale literally just for the, the leech, you know? But I don't know, just like have full on self sustain. Hit the scales plus spirit bloom. Rewind to it. Yeah, I mean like you have like a lot of tools to top one person up, but the thing is like other specs don't have to use their major cooldowns to like spot heal someone. Like I just press Vivify on someone, you know? Whereas like, but okay, okay, on that same note, on that same token, I think one of the reasons why people are excited about preservation is the tier set that they're going back to does allow for instant living flames. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Um let me pull it up really quick. Um Season, season four tier sets. Wow. So I can tell I've definitely looked this up in the past. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it allows for instant like spot healing, which is why people chose it, because that is just a bad thing. So every third, oh, maybe not. That's augmentation. Um, the station press. Okay. Empowered spells increase reversions healing by 35% for six seconds. So yeah, that also is just going to be like, hey, if you dream breath in your next um, reversion, your next spot heal, we'll just do more healing. So that's cool. But then your reversion hots healing has a chance to cause your next living flame to cast instantly and deal 20% more uh, damage or healing. So just as long as you're, you're good about maintaining your reversion or your renewing mist-esque hot that they have, where it's two charges, you just keep it on people. Um, it does have more mechanics, obviously, but you just keep this on people, and that way every time it ticks, I think, maybe it's every time it ticks, it'll give you a chance to proc this for your next Living Flames instant. So yeah, now with this tier set, that's why they went back to it, because they love the instant Living Flame, because it's just such a flaw in the class design. Uh, Rescue is a chain shield too. Yeah, but you, you normally can't, like... That's what I'm saying is like, yeah, you, you could rescue them, but rescuing also puts yourself in danger to go get them, you know, like they're all a lot of their tools just kind of make their positioning weird. And not to mention their two best healing spells like Dream Breath are not best, but like two very important healing things, Dream Breath and um, Resonating Sphere, Resonant Sphere, just you have to be positioned a certain way to hit everyone. Um, Vivify is also not instant, or at least not always. Yeah, it's not. It's it's instant often enough. Like it, it kind of always is available in the sense that you're always doing other things and just sitting on this proc until you need it. You know, but like when you need it, it's there. But the fact that it sits there and it doesn't go away, it it you kind of always do have an like an instant um, Vivify at the ready, in theory, like, coming into a pack, you know? Yeah, but Valence, I mean, they do have a lot of things going for them. Like, I will say, their, their whole little combo of, if you're playing, I think, like, in Raid, you can go, like, two different ways. Like, some people prefer the really easy, like, heroic way of healing where you just go like the, the Emerald Blossom build and stuff. But the build that's like crazy that you see put up insane numbers is the one where you just have those like Emerald Communion ramps. You only get like one or two per fight, but when it goes off, dude, you heal so much. Like you get echoes on everyone. 
then you you um what do you do? You life by it, so you vert it, embrace yourself, and then you emerald communion, and everyone just goes like like up to full. It's crazy. Um, let's see. Evokers don't, don't feel good to play. You just need one boss on mythic to see their limitations. I agree. I swapped to monk. I got cutting edge season one with prez evoker. Season one prez evoker was kind of the truth though. But also it's because they had this tier set that they're going to have again this season. So season four Prez Evoker, now that I'm thinking about it, they definitely do have a lot more tools to spot heal people that don't put them in danger because their Living Flame will. Also, that Living Flame will do more damage too. So if you just have a reversion ticking, your Living Flames will kind of every now and then do more damage, which if you get that on the Cleaving Living Flame, that's pretty sick, you know. Um, And season two. Yeah, Ceiling Panda is kind of a cracked player. I think they, they definitely have Ceiling Panda. I don't think we've ever played together. No, because I'm trying to think were you in that first stream, but no. Oh, and also today you told me you were EU, so I guess we haven't ever played together. But I know you. every time you talk, you know what you're talking about. So um, see, we need we need a, a Lusteruni. Um, I thought about Mistweaver, but I struggle hard with melee classes. I mean, there's definitely like a lot of like merit to that. Um, like a lot of people struggle with melee, so they stay away from from Mistweaver. But the the thing is, like about Mistweaver is like the the portion of Mistweaver that is melee is their easiest part. Like, just you can the you can kind of learn the basics of the class of like part of the the spell kit by just like practicing on dummies like you can just see like whoa that's a lot of aoe green numbers if i just spinning crane kick on my fey line or my jade fire line or like you can just practice your single target rotation and like watch your blackout kicks and get that rising sun kick reset you know like you can see like it does like a lot of feeling as long as you have your ancient teachings like tiger palm tiger palm rising sun kick blackout kick you see all those green numbers is like pretty crazy and it adds up um aquatic bear said i don't rate it all i just do mythic plus In mythic plus they're quite melee yeah mythic plus they're they're heavily melee if if you play it the quote correct way but um you guys know what i mean like the 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 way that's most efficient for a mythic plus environment our holy pal then pa uh parsed Top five in the world on a pro progression tendril kill. She's cracked. That's crazy. My tendril prog was pretty sick too. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, hey, just wanted to uh, thanks for your misweaver guide on mythic plus. I just read that totally backwards on your miss your mythic plus guide on misweaver monk. Um, I'll play it next season, and it was so great to have. Now time to train. Oh, you got this. Let's see. Le le La Coquelico, which reminds me of that show that we were talking about, Code Lyoko. But uh, by the way, is it still up to date, or has there or was there some changes? There have been some changes, but they're very minor. So you can go ahead and be like practicing, going basically fully on that build or that uh, that guide that I made a while back. But there have been a couple talent updates since then, but nothing to like change the core mechanics. Um, and then come season four time, once this drops, I'll have a a refreshed, updated, up-to-date, like everything up-to-date guide. Um, I'm French. Sorry, haha, -ha, it means poppy, gotcha. I speak a small amount of French, a small amount. I took it for like seven years, um, and then I got a, a very bad brain injury. And since then, I was like, I, I just cannot. So um, you, you might be able to chat in, <clears throat> in French, and I might be able to understand if you're more comfortable that way, but... If you're fine speaking English, then that's fine too. I don't, I don't mind. Um, I'm just dumb and struggle to watch everyone's health mechanics and making sure I'm in range to actually melee. Yeah, Aquatic Bear, I think one issue that a lot of players that are new to healing have is you you just focus so much on how everyone's health is like struggling and like you're, you're struggling to heal it. But the the if you watch a veteran healer, <clears throat> they're not... Veteran healers don't really stare at health bars and, and think about healing them. They they think about what's coming 
their way. Like you, you think about like, oh, this boss will do this mechanic in like 30 seconds. And I know then I'll have to have a cooldown for it. You know, and it's like once you kind of like learn boss mechanics, people just get so much better at healing. Because you need you need to understand what's coming at you to be able to heal it, you know. No, it's great for me. I speak English, no worries. Even if I'll make a mistake. Oh, you're totally fine. Your English is much better than my French already, so. Alright, let's do this. Neltheris, I have not done change Neltheris yet. At all. But I've heard it's really good. So we are just literally going to follow the pack. What trinkets do we have on? Firax. Painted Rage Heart. Um, let's actually... Oh. While they're killing that, I'm going to be... Changing this to trigger on the item. Firax Tainted Rage Heart. We're gonna copy that. We're gonna load. We'll just have it load forever. Boom. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Also explains my struggles with R Druid. Oh, especially yeah, setup. Specs are, are brutal. Um, yeah, we need to also fix our click cells. Oh no. This is the worst part of having to reinstall everything. Uh, click. Let's see. Soothing Mist, we need to bind that. Tiger's Lust. What else do we need to bind? This Weaver Spells Detox for sure. Life Cocoon. Developing mist. I think my group's like about to leave here though. Synthols. Alright, everything's bound. Who's AFK? What? Alright, well, we just look for a new tank. It's an eight. It is also a Naltheris. <laughs> Why do all the weirdos show up on PTR? I have no idea. Uh, so you have MRT and use personal notes. I don't think like a, new players really use MRT. Being honest, I think they they put a lot of their their brain power into. Just knowing their own buttons, you know. Oh, you said, do you have a more personal note? I don't know if I have that on. I don't think I have that on PTR. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that add-on. I got an issue with my Life Cocoon's macro on mouse over. It doesn't want to cast for some reason, even if it's correctly written. I'll try with click. Yeah, I just, I just full swap to click because... Macros are a little scuffy, a little scuffy. By the way, if anyone is a tank and wants to tank this key, feel free to come in. Um, <laughs> this guy said, uh, this LV Ninja, like Mistweaver YouTube guy. <laughs> Um, that question, yeah, was I, I figured that much, but I was just thinking for myself, like out loud, kind of if I have MRT working. So MRT Aquatic Bear is this really cool thing that a lot of people use in raid. It's a way to like track your group's cooldowns. Um, but you can, and, and like a lot of high end raid leaders will kind of write out everyone's cooldown and when they should use it in a fight, kind of, and like what mechanics come at what times and stuff. But what you can do is you can kind of like erase everything that doesn't have to do with you and just make your own note that just says, hey, at three minutes and seven seconds, I'm going to pop Yulon. At four minutes, eight seconds, I'm going to press Revival, you know? And you can have that just tell you what times to press your cooldowns. And then you can like have it on your screen like right here as like a list. And you'll see like as the time ticks to like ticks toward you pressing your cooldown, it'll like fade away and you can be like, oh, I need to press it and like go to the next one and stuff. So MRT is like a, it's called method raid tools, but 
it's just a raid tool that you can kind of set your cooldowns that way. Honestly, you only really use it in like um like groups that you you like play with all the time, you know, you never really use it in in like pug. Like if you just do LFR, there's really no point in having it, but in like mythic raiding a lot of guilds use it. All right, tanks, where you at? I kind of want to I don't know I know you can only do like one chain at a time. What was the change here? I guess we could pull it out. Pull it out. Pull it up. Pull up what the change was. Now Theris change. Yeah, Google MRT and WoW game. And MRT WoW in game. There is settings, raid note or something. Enable it at the top. Settings, show personal notes. Everyone know, yeah. You can turn it on in a lot of ways. Oh, I did have that. Just didn't think of, of that acronym. But yeah, I don't read anymore. Yeah. All right. This was eight months ago. What's like the recent one that they just changed? July 2023. They, didn't they just like do some changes to it? Like, like 2024. Neltheris chains nerfed. That was eight months ago, though. I don't know. I know, didn't they? Isn't there like a thing that they just announced like a lot of changes to dungeons? There's like a page somewhere. Uh, you're right. You can. Oh, gotcha. Where are the tanks, dude? PTR usually is like full of tanks and healers, and you usually struggle for like DPS. Uh, the thing I'd recommend. If you're only doing heroic or pugs, is to not use it for spells, but rather to write down spells. There, like some people, some people use like not MRT, but they use something similar in, in Mythic Plus. But I've, I don't, I've never looked into that. Um, also, I need to turn off that on Moobot to watch episode one. Go to tools and change cert date to with within thirty days. Yeah, that would help definitely. Refining my search. Tools anytime. I feel like past week. No, you're right. 30 days would probably give us the best results. Dungeon tuning. Appreciate it. Who said that? It was Scott Boynton. Thank you so much. All right. So the chains now stuns enemies for five seconds. Um, however, it deals no damage, but it increases the damage the mobs take by 50% for five seconds. So while they're stunned, they can 50% more damage. Isn't there a thing like you can't stack chains now or something? Is that, is that not a thing? I, I could have sworn I heard that. Fiery focus. Um, ah, yes, this. Okay. He now deals high damage to the tank every second until the cast ends no longer deals aoe damage to players around him so he would like normally like if he ran over you which he kind of didn't really have control of ever oh also i saw live wow open uh oh that was scary but now he just like trucks your tank as he charges at him that's kind of crazy willing to buy a tank ain't that the truth also pew pew what's up yeah the chains are a damage buff now so they kind of work like the fire the croft fire buff now it seems like uh, you can use the same chain once. Okay, so like not all five players can use the same chain like before. Because that was dumb. That was really stupid. I hated this dungeon when it was live. Because it like lived or died on the first pool if people knew what was up. And like if they didn't, you just wipe and like everyone would leave, you know? And it just felt so dumb that like... Like, 50% of the whole dungeon's overall damage happened in the first, like, five seconds, and it was all environmental damage. Like, it was like, what is, what is happening? Um, but I do like that so far. Also, the fiery focus, dude. That was such an annoying ability. Warlord Sarga. Ugh, this boss. Uh, the debuff only lasts 30 seconds, but now stacks was five minutes. You can... The curse. Interesting. Uh, the dragon's eruption radius is reduced to six yards. 
Oh, good. Because it used to be like bullet hell. You could not, not bullet hell, but like swirly hell. You could not find a good place to stand sometimes. If everyone was kind of loosely stacked, it got kind of nightmarish. That's good. That's really good. Dude, where are these tanks, man? Let us swap the tank. I did a plus in Nelth on my H Pally. It was pretty easy. Oh, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. I know, like, the, the pain points of this dungeon are, or used to be, the first few pools. This pool can kind of get a little tough to heal if you don't have cooldowns coming in, and then the final boss. But everyone always struggled with the hammer boss. I, I did not struggle with the forge guy. He was never tough for me. Look at our Brewkeeper's Promise helping us parse. Crazy. Hopefully they tune the mob's health. Or amount of mobs, if I recall correctly. Timers, um, timers were tight if you didn't use the chains. Yeah, I've heard that it's, it is a little harder to time this dungeon. I feel like they might do some health adjustment. If that does become a case on live, they usually they're usually pretty good about this. Like I remember in Shadowlands, yeah, look, Shadowlands was a trap shoot or a crap shoot, but there was a lot of um tuning that happened around like some of the dungeons had like they just never scaled the timer for them for like months. So it was just like really hard to time like halls of infusion and What's the other one? There's one that was just like so hard to time at the start of Dra of Shadowlands. Um, it was the one where, God, I can picture the bosses. It was the one where on the final platform you just need to get the boss to fifty percent, and it like spawns like one of three like ghostly figures that kind of cut the room in thirds, and all you have to do is just dodge one and step into the next. What was that Dragonflight or the Shadowlands? I bet I could find it before y'all. Figure out what I'm trying to say. But like, Halls was tough to time, and then Sanguine Depths, dude. Sanguine Depths was hard to time. But then they uh, eventually, like in 10.0.5, or, or whatever it was, or 9.0.5, they finally, like, added an, a minute to Halls of Atonement and took some health off of, like, the big dudes that slam at the start that, like, activate the first boss. Um... Uh, no, 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 not Tazvesh, but yeah, Tazvesh did have a similar mechanic. I know what you mean, Body Bear, but I, um, I was talking about Call, but yeah, Sanguine Depths was like really tough to time at the start, and but they that was also just like an imbalanced dungeon, but yeah, eventually they put in a lot of nerfs and stuff. But I feel like this dungeon pool, they, I mean, they'll definitely tweak it a bit more now, I think. Maybe it was the group, but we did a plus 10 fort slash tyrannical and it timed it no issue. That's funny. Dude, we I did a, a key the other day where I had like three affixes and fort and tyrannical. I was like, this is so buggy. Like, I'm pretty sure one of the affixes just never even happened. Oh man, this is like live. This is like retail wow. Where are the tanks, dude? We had a tank, and then he was like, someone's AFK. It's like, no, we weren't. I just did a ready check, and everyone was here. What are you talking about? Man, I'll tell you what. My my allergies are going crazy right now. I don't know about y'all, but growing up, I had, like, such bad allergies. There was, like, one year where I had such bad allergies that I would, like, I had a nosebleed every day in the school year. Every day. It was like a common thing. Like, everyone knew me as the kid with, with nosebleeds. And it was all during allergy season. Like, crazy. Dang, we lost one. Let's, uh, browse the group, see what people are throwing up. I mean, this is the final day of PTR. So. Yeah, true. Nah, I think there just aren't a lot of groups queuing right now. Any. Nelth is a tough one without the chain damage. Yeah, I mean, I guess 
but like uh, yeah i guess it, it'll become like tougher to time because you, you might end up having to like split this pool up into a few um i assume it's probably not worth crafting anything right now no because the new new expansion comes out or new, new not no expansion the new season starts in like two two weeks from tomorrow so you would only get two weeks value of it and i would i would say just hold off there's nothing meaningful unless you're like pushing an achievement like if you're like your guild's progging Firak, you know or like you're at 2900 io and you just need that last 100 but other than that i would i would hold off on crafting but maybe someone else has like other reasons that they they craft things for but yeah i'd, I'd definitely hold off i guess just people aren't tanking right now here's a dpo oh. Oh, tanks here, tanky tank. Yeah, I guess having no, having one DPS drops out kind of does open up the queue a bit more. Let's just make sure all of our buttons are working. Yeah, we're chilling. Dude, I loved Tazavesh. I know a lot of people hated it. And I, I remember when it first came out, I was like, what the heck is this? Like, what's going on? And then um, the more I learned it, the more I was like, okay, this is kind of dope. But I don't, I don't know. I love, like, the goofy boss mechanics. Like, one of the reasons why I love WoW it's just because it's like it's a game that it, for a while it just didn't take itself seriously from what i knew about it like you know you just see everything like so animated like all the characters talking and stuff but then like shadowlands was like super serious and everything's about death and like oh and win you know but like when when boss fights are just like goofy like that's fun to me like i loved the other side it's like one of my favorite dungeons just because of one somdi but then like I guess in Waycrest Manor, I don't like that dungeon, but just like the shit talking that happens to like Lady Waycrest during the triad fight and stuff, and yeah. But just like the mail room boss was fun. The what was the other like goofy fight? One boss just stole your weapon. Like, hey, give me your weapon. And then the there was like one you had to play like basically rock band. And wow, it was just a fun place, I think. And it was fun to push too because it, when that season, when I was pushing that key, you had the trinket that um, Resonant Reservoir or Resonating Reservoir, whatever it was called. That trinket was so much fun, especially in that dungeon. You just racked up so much damage with it. Um. Also, do do any of y'all have any plans today for the eclipse? Has it already happened? Like, what's going on? I keep hearing about this eclipse, but I don't live in a spot where it's, like, prominent, you know? Make sure if you do do it. We, 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 when I was in college, I went to this college that was in Alabama called Auburn, and there was an eclipse there. It was, like, semi-visible, but it was just to where, like, we all had to like use eye protection and like look up at it and stuff. It was really cool, but there's a an eclipse while I was in college. Um but this one we are not in like a good spot for. Yeah, Blonde Sandy was like such a good one. Or the Legion one where the loot at the end is the other end of the worm. Ooh, I don't remember that one. I didn't play in Legion. <laughs> so I don't I don't know that dungeon. It happened two hours ago. Okay, well, there you go. Happy Eclipse Day, I guess. <laughs> I guess we eclipsed the eclipse. We we still have not found a tank. Crazy. Is it? Oh, is it? Hold on. I think I know what's going on. It was mythic, not mythic 
plus. Maybe that's what it was. <laughs> Roll Tide, yikes. I was rooting for Alabama and the, uh, the March Madness. Would have been pretty cool. Because, you know, when we went to Auburn, there was one year where my wife was in her master's that um, Auburn was in the final four. So, like, we, we were just like, yeah, you guys have football, but we have basketball. And then until this year, Auburn's done better. But this year, Alabama did better. So, I don't know. <clears throat> but it was it was fun rooting for them. I'm not, like, super stickler about it. Yeah, honestly, the game was, like, really close, too. Up until the very end, UConn kind of pulled away with it, but... When's the final game for the men's? I, I saw South Carolina. I'm not going to spoil anything, but South Carolina and Iowa I saw, which looked to be a very good game, too. But um, Super sad that Tennessee lost. It was in the rotation recently. It's Neltharians and Naxorus. Neltharians Lair and Naxorus. I don't know Naxorus. Today. Oh, it's today. Okay. Interesting. On a Monday? It's crazy. Men's final. It's uh, UConn and Purdue, right? UConn and Purdue is the, the final. I think surely UConn wins, right? I'm not a betting man. They, uh, they looked pretty dominant versus... Um, versus Alabama. That's the worm boss, the third one, the NPC voiceover. Essentially tells you to search its poop for loot. Oh, and Neltharian's Lair, okay, but oh, that boss was so annoying. But oh, that, that's interesting. That's interesting. I never listened. I think during that phase, like while I was playing, um, I just had all, like a lot of the sound turned off. Like here I have like, on the PTR, I have all the sound, but if you listen to, like, my live game and stuff, I don't have the music turned on. I think I have it turned off here. Dude, but yeah, like, I turn off music. I turn off, like, some things. Like, dialogue. I think I have it. Some things turned off. Purdue's good. I I literally don't know anything about Purdue. But, um... You're rooting for Purdue. Interesting. I think I would... If I had to choose, I would root for Purdue just because in my mind they're the underdog. But they're probably not the underdog, you know? But I've always liked Purdue as a college. Dude, still no tanks. Some days are just like this, though. you said well i think i'm gonna bounce thanks anyways lame tanks yeah I'm, I'm feeling the same way i think we just drop and queue up for groups no worries dude no no worries at all i get it can't sit here forever and ptr keys are looking to kind of be a little dead right now which is annoying it looks like just everyone kind of mass exodus the the ptr but we can load up live and see see what's good Let's load up live. It looks like PTR is like in a dead state right now. Do I change the stream title? Healer keys. That sucks. Right. I really need footage. If any of you guys are playing the PTR or have and, and have recordings of your keys as a healer. Send them to me on Discord. Like, send me your VODs. I need them. Uh, but if you if you only played it in Mythic Plus, it wouldn't really catch on. Oh, okay. Cheats folder? Oh, cheats. It's for Pokemon. It's whenever you download the Visual Boy Advance that it comes with, like, a cheats thing. Pretty sure it might be empty. Yeah, this folder is empty. Cheats. But it's for whenever you download the... Uh, 
thing. I have cleared my cleared my name, huh? Just dropping the scandal. There's my video ideas folder. My two scripts. This script I never made a video on, but just talking about the wow terms that people use. Um, yeah, I guess another video ideas folder called ideas. Uh, we need a heal on PTR. Oh man, okay, I would have joined, but man, it was looking pretty dead for a bit there. Why is it, the game's not loading. <laughs> Sorry, Nature True. Um, This is how he became so good at Miss Weaver. Because <laughs> I have a, an empty cheats folder on, on, my, on my computer, that's fine. No, imagine, like you just download an empty cheats folder and you just like, you Pavlov yourself, not Pavlov, um, you placebo yourself into thinking you're just, you're in God mode at all points. Pretty funny. Um, let's load up. We might be able to do like a key, but it's gonna be hard to get into a group. The holy priest is break the meta. I'm pretty sure. Um, are you going to main Mistweaver in season four? Yeah, yeah, I will. Um, I don't know what season four is going to look like. It's just, it's always so vague coming into these seasons, but I'm coming into it as a Miss Weaver. I don't know if my guild is going to raid at all. Um, So I might like have to just like find like a, a temporary guild to raid with or something. We'll see. But we're, yeah, we're, we're definitely planning on, on whipping out the Miss Weaver again for season four. Look up our... Pull up our, our Raider IO. Are there any keys we can get this week on the Holy Priest? We can do a Tall Dazar, Dark Heart. That's basically it. A Tall Dazar or Dark Heart. Yeah, Tall Dazar, Dark Heart. What are the affixes again? In Corp. Same one, Fortified. Are there any people putting up big keys? There's a 23 at all. 22 at all, at all, but we'll try to get into this one first. Dude, that's so funny. You saw the cheats folder. And I kind of want to show you guys my other screens. I don't have anything really on it. I have Python for when I was in college. I had to use Python. I could probably... I don't remember any Python, but I used to be pretty good at it. I have Idle, which is just how you access Python. I have OBS Studios, Heroes of the Storm, Liability Insurance, which was like a thing that I had to get to get an insurance. Oh, to get a, a swimmer, a swim instructor job. And then Thumbnail Images folder, which I might be empty. I feel like I intended to have a Thumbnail Images now as an AI art folder. That's all that's on this other monitor, but y'all see everything on my screen. I am an open book because I, I have integrity. Maybe we just look for 23s. Get into a Black Rook 24, yes sir. We'll queue up for this. Hey, we got into the Black Rook 24, very nice. All right. My audio, my audio is just louder than normal. Let me turn it down. Usually I have my audio very low. But happy Monday. Do y'all have any plans for this week? I know. A lot of us have a, a couple more goals that we're shooting for on live um, before season four drops. And we don't have much time left, but what are y'all's goals for the next few weeks? Even if outside of WoW, like, are you guys using this time to, um, to 
Uh, hold on. What, what, what's everyone using these this time? I'm burned out, so I'm home. Look, I feel that. A lot of people use season four, or at least the time leading up to a new season, to kind of just like take a, a chill pill on WoW and, and maybe play another game. Myself, I am using this time to grind out content. I am working on a lot of videos that will be released when season four drops. Burnout is not an option. Guy's asking if if we'll need a lust or if I think drums will be enough. I'm like, dude, it's, it's black rook. We should be fine. Hmm. Work burnouts so your home. I feel that for sure. Uh, one thing I, I don't really do often that used to be in my morning ritual is I would check my work email or check my YouTube email just to see if anyone emailed me about, I don't know, maybe a sponsorship or something, but I don't know, slowly, yeah, as time gone, as time has gone on, I've kind of given up on that. No one's really reaching out about that to me. We've got a feral druid, some form of warlock, demonology warlock, and a rep paladin. Maybe I can like tease what I've been working on. I don't know. I kind of just want to drop it. Like I kind of just want to post it when season four kind of drops. Yeah, I think I keep it under wraps. Oh, I'm so excited though. It's It's so much work, but I'm so happy with it. I think it'll be good. Dang, this is just a waiting on tank stream. On the black rook though. But yeah, I'm a huge fan. For those that are wondering about the if I'm playing Miss Weaver season four, I am such a fan of our current tier set. And us keeping it is definitely making me more excited to play in season four because a lot of classes like disc priest if they would have gone back to their previous tier set that made holy word radiance power word radiance yeah power word radiance if it, that one instant cast i don't know dude that was a fun iteration of disc priest and it would have been fun with all their reworks but um yeah definitely really really enjoy mist fever at all points in time I'm gonna post in the Discord though if any of you guys are have been able to play at all in PTR. Alright, let me 
let me post it. guys have never played healer keys on the PTR happen, happen to have VODs of the keys. I would love it if you sent them to me. I need a lot of footage for Big series I'm making and would really appreciate it. <clears throat> All right. I don't know. Okay, so he has two friends that are about to join our group, so we're chilling. No more waiting. Less than five minutes. Ooh, brother. I guess we can be browsing. Yeah, see, it's either stay in this for his friends or do a 22, like try to queue up for a 22. But I think this is just better for us. Getting this IO will be better. we can fly around and see if there's pretty sure there's like rares over here though right like elite mobs where's the stuff that can dro drop a mount is there anything that can like drop a good mount over here i just don't know these things like apparently there's like a this person can he give me something good I just don't know this map. This is like BFA or Broken Isles. This is not BFA. What was this? Port of Stars? Dalaran. Yeah, part of the thing about being someone who, who started playing WoW like in the past couple years is like I just don't know where everything is on the like the open world or whatever it's called the you know the the rest of the world legion ah gotcha like i just don't know where what um what everything where everything is like where are the what were the chase you know mobs that people used to go after like did people want this risen saber kitten boy back then you know we can go ahead and use it. Because, like, in Shadowlands and stuff, like, I knew which ones people would generally kind of run around and, and try to fight, but here, I have no idea. I really not Mel? What's going on? This looks like the arena room. This looks, this looks like that one arena match place. 
Probably get out of here though. Open this? No. We might need a summon. We're like trapped. What is this? Guys, the keys are going to start soon. We finally have everyone. Um, we finally have everyone, and I am, of course, trapped. What is this? Was this just like a way for PvP people to... To practice? This is kind of cool. I can imagine, like, if this were current content, you just, like, practice LOSing the cast and, like, ooh, a Mistweaver Monk spawn. Like, how do I face this, you know? Oh, never mind. I can just pour it. What am I doing? Let's go. Finally get this key going. Oh. Plus 24, this is going to be no joke. I'm going to open my bottle before I drink from it. Alright guys, it's showtime. Why do I have Thought Steel mine or key bound? Thought Steel? I've I've literally never I don't know what that spell does. Alright, let's get into it guys. Hey, what's up, Nick? Welcome back. I think that area was a spot where they would have PvP dailies. That makes sense. Kinda like Maldraxis. Those NPCs spawn so you could uh get count if there weren't enough players. Weren't other players, okay. Finally go time. Let's get into this key. Adon Moats said, I'm glad I caught your live stream. After taking uh, for multiple seasons, I watched quite a few of your videos and got inspired from Mistweaver for season four. Oh, that's excellent. I'm glad you caught it too. Sorry it had been slow there for a bit, but we were swapping from PTR to live. Um, but now we're, we're ready. Uh-oh. Wow. Uh, you absolutely hate to see that. Maybe I spoke too soon. What on earth? Anyways, take two. Hey, I'm glad you made it too. Honestly, really nice for you to say. Ugh. I got it. We're going to see if we can make up for that mistake. Gotta be careful though. Oh, someone left the group, honestly. Don't blame him, but golly, that sucks, dude. Waiting this long and then for it to just go like that. <laughs> dude just ran in there butt naked. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. What's this guy's item level? Yeah. You hate to see that. Gotta love, gotta love it. 
Any any other keys that we could do that are upgrades? Just don't think so. I think we're like capped out this week. Oh my god. Imagine waiting that time or that all that time for that key to start. And then that happening. Ugh. Um, but yeah, I am so excited for Miss Weaver season four. I think we're taking yeah, that was that was a that was one of the keys of all time for sure, Main, for sure. But I um I think we're in one of the most exciting times of being a Mistweaver monk there's been, at least since I've started. And it's exciting that we're getting to take it back into some dungeons that used to kick our ass and kick their ass, you know? Like, I'm very excited for this time. Um, it's a good time to be a Mistweaver monk, let's just say. Uh, these guys are queuing up their 23. I'm good. Okay, thank you, though. Uh, yeah, guys, it, it's it's honestly, it's just so dry. Like, there are no keys going on. We can have both the PTR and uh, retail loaded up and just see which one gets a key first. Man, these keys are inky. I mean, Dark Heart we could queue up for. We might get into this one. Dude just ran in with his pants down, just got chopped. See, any any more keys posted? Fifteens. Bracket eyed, we never did. Fourteen bracket eyed, that'd be so much fun. Like truly fun. Yep, PTR shuts down in 19 hours, so what would that be? 22, so 1 a.m.-ish, 1 p.m.-ish, I think. We have both retail and, or like current WoW and PTR pulled up. Dang, guys. Is your vault? Let's get into it. Be fun. His name is Insane Sanity. Got it, dude. Man, I really want to get like a Brackenhide key in, like just for the footage. I need that for a video. Dang. I don't know, guys. Look, I I prefer the streams to be more high octane than this, but I can't really do much about like it being this dry. So I think I think we just call it. I mean, we we had some like some good keys at the start of the stream, but then, dude, it's just, I feel like I haven't done a key in like an hour, and I, I don't want to waste anyone's time, so. What do you guys think? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we'll just call it and say, go again when, when the servers reset and stuff. So we have a lot of keys to grind next week. Um, or I guess starting tomorrow. But yeah, guys, I think I'm gonna call today's stream. It was fun, it was, it just slowed down to a halt, basically, but. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Monday and have a good week. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. And for Nick, I'll see you tomorrow during raid. But <laughs> uh, yeah, it's always nice hanging out with you guys. And I appreciate y'all for the support and for hanging out with me. But and it's just a slow one. I'm going to go work on videos, though. So don't think I'm not just dipping. I'm, I got stuff to do so that you guys can have a better season four. Um, but yeah, yeah, fingers crossed for sure. But all right, I'll see you guys next time.